We've been friends since we were two years old. Yeah. Between best friends. The Paris and Nicole fight. The famous feud between Paris and Nicole. They hate each other's guts. And yet, the show must go on. Nicole, we need to talk. So talk. No, you can talk first. I'll listen. This is lame. If you have something to say, then just say it. So Nicole Richie, she got, her wedding came and it went. Were you invited? I was out of town. I was busy working. It was actually our first fight, and I've been friends with her since I was two years well, old. We just kind of grew apart. If you aren't subscribed to the Let's Get Into It podcast, then you're only getting half the tea. For longer videos, deep dives, and of course, more of me, subscribe to the Let's Get Into It podcast listed in the description below. Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie had one of the worst feuds in history. These two went from childhood friends to reality show stars. And then Paris said Nicole became jealous of her. And all of the fame pushed Nicole to do bad things. Like playing Paris's adult tape in front of all of her family and friends and attempt to embarrass her. But Paris isn't innocent either, calling Nicole Richie ugly and way too thin. These two went through a lot of messiness and brought us all along for the ride. So let's get into it. Lately, I've been eating good and making my life a whole lot easier. And that's all thanks to Factor 75. Whether you are juggling a busy schedule or focusing on your fitness goals or just craving convenient and delicious meals, Factor's ready to eat meals have been a game changer for me. No more stressing about meal prep or what I'm gonna eat. I just heat and enjoy in minutes and look how good their meals look. They taste even better and with options to fit various lifestyles like keto, low calorie, vegan, vegan and vegetarian, there's something for everyone. If you're focusing on fitness and wellness like I am, Factor Meals are not only convenient, but they're also packed with nutritious ingredients that help me stay on track with my health goals. This truffle and steak mashed potatoes was so delicious, I ate every bit of it and I felt amazing. Flexibility is key and Factor 75 understands that. Plus, if you need to skip a week or two if you're going to take a vacation or you just want a break, there's no problem with that either. But here's the exciting part because you guys can get 50% off your first factor box and free wellness shots for life using my link or scanning the QR code on the screen. Use code P-O-G-S-L-O-A-N-JAN50 and that means you can choose two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you're an active subscriber. You guys probably see these expensive wellness shots at the grocery stores and to get one with your factor meals is a great deal. Factor has something for everybody. Make Make sure you guys check my link in the description below. Thank you, Factor 75, for sponsoring this video and enjoy. Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie had a tumultuous relationship. And while we all fell in love with them on The Simple Life, and it did appear that they had a genuine relationship, their friendship has had a lot of ups and a lot of downs, and they've all played out in the media. But before I get ahead of myself, The Simple Life first premiered on Fox in 2003 and followed the lives of Paris and Nicole as they traded in their trust funds for cowboy boots. For five weeks, fans saw the pair live on a farm and experience life without luxury. The show ultimately ended in 2007 along with their friendship, but before the show even started, Paris had Nicole in mind. She said, one day I got a call from my agents and they said that they want my sister and I to go to the middle of nowhere and to live on a farm and basically have our phones, money, and everything taken away. And my sister Nikki immediately said no. The first person person I thought of was Nicole Richie. She's been my best friend since we were two years old. Well, Fox contacted me and said, we want to do a show that's like Green Acres meets Clueless. We want you to play this kind of blonde airhead. Nicole, you be the troublemaker. You guys are going to go. We're not telling you where, but it's going to be in the middle of nowhere. We had no idea what we were getting into. This was like the beginning of reality television. Basically continue season after season and playing this character so the whole world assumed that's who I really was. 13 and a half mil million viewers. It was just so exciting. I, that show I'm so proud of. I love that it's so timeless and people are still enjoying it today. And I cannot believe it's about to be the 20 year anniversary in December. <laughs> I have to admit, I was in love with this show. And when COVID came around, I may have rewatched the entire series. Nowadays, I feel like the series wouldn't hit the same, even though I've heard of like a remake 
just because like I don't know me and my friend Spill Sash were talking about like going and doing things like this but I feel like it's kind of tacky nowadays like when people who are in like privileged situations do things that are you know working class which exactly was the premise of this show and they are two heirs to Hollywood dynasties you know the Hiltons and the Richies so they're coming from a lot of wealth. Into their 20s these two became inseparable and the paparazzi loved to take photos of them. Ultimately they're like popularity in the media led to this show idea. During the first few seasons, the pair remained close. They even dated good Charlotte's twin brothers, Joel and Benji Madden, around the same time. Oh my gosh, how like Y2K? Like two besties dating like two guys that are... <laughs> twin brothers. While the series aired, Paris was considered the more popular of the pair. Nicole was often mocked as Paris's oddball sidekick. And even though people may have seen them that way, they love to watch them in these situations, working these jobs and having no idea what they're doing. Hi, what's up? Welcome to Sinex. Give me a medium mountain dude and a medium coat. Okay. Do you have any idea what have a great day. The way that she says, like, bye, thank you, bitch. Like, I cannot. Like, seeing these two out here, I've actually worked in fast food. I've done the whole thing. I used to work at Chick-fil-A when I was, like, 15 years old. I have a video talking about that if you guys ever want to check it out. But these two, like, working these jobs was chaos. This is fun. I will hide the ladders. We can't take it down. Hurry. Take that down. Really, really quick. You better run with the ladder really quick. That is not funny. <laughs> Now, the show premiered in 2003, but it wasn't long until Paris Hilton found herself in a scandal. In 2004, her then-boyfriend Rick decided to leak their tape where they had an intimate moment in a hotel room. When this tape was leaked, Paris spoke about how it made her literally want to die at some points. She said it was like being R-worded, which I don't know if you guys have seen the Paris Hilton stream. I feel like we've all seen it. It's kind of like part of like growing up. Um, and she was clearly, I mean, in my opinion, and I think it's kind of like everyone knows that she was rolling like on Molly, her pupils were huge. She said it was like being R worded. I felt like I lost part of my soul and been talked about in such a cruel and mean way. I was like, I just didn't want to live because I thought everything was taken from me, which back then, like nowadays, everyone's got that only fans, like they're doing it on, you know, for monetization, but she was just exploited and nobody really was doing this. And like, I mean, thank God she survived it. Hey, I'm Rick and this is my one night in Paris. I didn't leave my house for like months. I was so embarrassed. I felt like everyone on the street was laughing at me. It's the first time that the words Paris Hilton and job have ever been used in a sentence. I couldn't, I literally could not walk on the street because I felt like every single person had watched it and had seen me naked and was talking behind my back. It was like being I felt like I've lost part of my soul and been talked about in such cruel and mean ways. I literally wanted to die at some point, so I was like, I just don't want to live, because I thought everything was taken away from me. Like, I didn't want to be known as that. So I think it's safe to say that Paris was traumatized from this video leak. So it's really surprising to hear that in 2005, then BFF Nicole Richie screened Paris's video at a party. That's actually what tabloids reported started this falling out between Nicole and Paris because I guess they were supposed to be celebrating like an SNL gig, a hosting gig. Yet, uh, it's not much of a celebration if your best friend is going to play your tape, like, for everyone at this party to mock. A source told People Magazine that Nicole was upset that Paris got to host SNL, so she decided to screen her tape out of jealousy. Quote, Paris was very hurt. She loves Nicole, but believes she is owed an apology. According to another report, the younger Hilton sister, Nikki, hosted a February viewing party for Paris's hosting gig. However, the crowd gathered to watch the taping of the show, 
but instead the footage of her intimate tape was put on screen. Nicole's team is denying that she had ever done this. I don't know who would do that as a friend, especially because we did see Paris and Nicole's bond on TV. That's such an intense like situation to film a reality show together in a whole new environment. So I can't imagine like Nicole having this anger and resentment towards Paris, but maybe watching like Paris you know, become so successful and get all the attention really ate her up. Like you guys, we're really close with our family. And we're like family because we've known each other our whole entire life. We've been friends since we were two years old. Like she's like, it's like not even a, we're like describe your friendship. I'm like, I can't, it's not, it's just like my life. It's just with her in it. That's just how I know it. It's like you with your family. A month after Paris hosted SNL, news of her falling out with Nicole was just a rumor. But these two girls, they like to go out and they're at the same parties and they're not speaking to each other, which is um, a clear sign. If you see two like public best friends at a space together and they never speak, something's up. Paris did little to sway the rumor in an interview saying, it's no big secret that Nicole and I are no longer friends. She said in 2005, she says, Nicole knows what she did and that's all I'm ever gonna say about it. For her part, Nicole Richie told the Today Show that she and Paris just grew apart. Quote, it just turned into a much bigger thing than it is. It's just not part of my life. And everything became more and more obvious like the Vanity Fair Oscar party they both attended and you know the entire time Paris was with her sister Nikki Nicole was with her DJ Beyonce at the time so they weren't really hanging out with each other at all a few days later things didn't appear to be any friendlier between Paris and Nicole according to people they were both spotted at a luxury Chinese restaurant Mr. Chow Paris was there first and Nicole took a seat on the other side of the restaurant out of Paris's view regular latte please thank you have a great one thanks you too Now, Paris and Nicole played it up, even though I do think this rift is real. I do, in fact, believe that Nicole probably played that tape. She probably was jealous. Maybe she didn't think it would be that hurtful, but clearly it is. That caused a major issue, but they also had contractual obligations. They had a show to film. So, of course, they kind of like toyed with their friendship along with the show, which makes me wonder if they were over it at this point or if it still was as uncomfortable as it is to watch. Um. A chai tea latte. Awesome. Can I get a Oh, excuse me, I didn't order this. That lady over there sent it to you. So of course they are playing this feud up and I think part of it has to do with them having to produce. By April 2005, Paris officially dumped Nicole at least as much as she could while still having a contract with The Simple Life. Actually, Paris announced at one point that Nicole would no longer be part of their reality show, that she would instead have Rod Stewart's daughter Kimberly Stewart filling in as her BFF for season four, which just wouldn't be the same. When speaking about Kimberly, Paris said, we've known each other since we were in our mom's tummies. We've been doing fashion shows for charity since we were three years old. So Kimberly Stewart is set to replace Nicole as her new best friend when Simple Life 4 begins production in Maui. She said, it's my show. I've had three seasons and I just want to freshen it up, make it newer and Funnier. Now, while Paris was out here partying it up with Kimberly Stewart and showing off the fact that she's going to be her new companion on the show, producers did not confirm or deny that Kimberly was coming in. They actually said, we are huge fans of both Paris and Nicole's and look forward to solidifying our plans for the next installment of the franchise. So keep in mind, like maybe it is Paris's show, but Nicole also has her hand in this as well. And even though Paris is walking around and saying, this is my show, this is what I want, Fox was wasn't really receptive to Kimberly Stewart. They weren't like, you know, jumping on board right away. They wanted Nicole Richie. And honestly, the world did as well. I think hearing this news, a lot of Simple Life fans didn't want this change. Here are the baddest, bluest blooded beauties of them all, Paris Hilton and Kimberly Stewart. In this clip, the blonde bikers navigate the red carpet on a pair of stylish choppers. Wow, looks like Kim just needs her engine turned on and she should be ready to whoa!
Nothing personal to Kimberly. I think she would be just as messy as Nicole, but people fell in love with Nicole and Paris's relationship. That reminds me of when I got an electric scooter as a kid. Um, I like didn't know what I was doing. I think every person, when you first like get on a vehicle where you go like this, you don't really know how to use it. And uh, clearly she didn't know what she was doing with a motorcycle, but I was on an electric scooter. I remember in my garage, like pulling it and it like took me up the side of the wall. Like I, it's kind of scary. I mean, that moment scared me. It could have been way worse. Nicole actually showed up to this same event that Paris was praising Kimberly at. Nicole told Us Weekly that she wouldn't be doing any press and she pretty much darted out of the party as soon as she arrived while Paris and Kim were dancing on a couch. In summer 2005, things got complicated. A couple months after Paris announced that she'd be ditching Nicole for Kimberly Stewart, it was pretty clear that that wasn't going to happen. The pair were contractually obligated to season four and Fox was trying everything to make it work. In other words, the two were going to be forced to work together, but in which capacity was up in the air but these two they refuse to film together so yeah we'll film the show but we're not filming it at the same time so they filmed their weeks and their experiences separately this definitely took away the charm of the show the network tried to shift around the format so they could be filming separately producers even considered forming the season like wife swaps where nicole and paris would stay in separate households with different cultural backgrounds and play the role of wife <laughs> weird but even though these girls are entertaining on their own together, they were like magic. So this season just didn't do the same thing that the other ones did. We didn't get to hear their banter back and forth. La comida is ready. Okay. You guys hungry? Yeah. Okay, please. Oh, gracias, amigos, bonitos, Hi, guys. How did it go? I figured if I was cooking for four, I might as well cook for eight. And I baked a cake also. Guys! Guys, we're, we're home. home! Kid! Kid! Oh my goodness, honey, look at this living room. What happened here? What? It looks like somebody ransacked the house too. Where's Paris? Dude, I'm gonna kill her. Now Paris blames Nicole for everything because she played her tape in front of all of her friends and her family and tried to make a mockery of her. But Nicole, she blames life. Though Paris blamed Nicole for the dissolution of their epic partnership and inadvertently fueled nasty rumors that Nicole possessed a nearly unimaginable level of pettiness, Miss Nicole Richie had a totally different understanding of their issues. Nicole appeared on Today to promote her book, The Truth About Diamonds. This was about six months after Paris published dumped her. Nicole reportedly claimed the pair wouldn't even speak if they ran into each other at the mall. They also claimed that Nicole had a lifestyle switch that she kind of like quit drinking, she's gone sober, she's not really wild anymore, while Paris is running around West Hollywood getting DUIs and you know doing exactly what we know her for. This source claims a friend of both says the rift is growing in a direction proportioned to Nicole's increasingly emotional maturity. Even though at 23, she is a whole seven months younger than Paris, why are we acting like seven months is an age gap? There's really no difference. Nicole has grown up a lot and Paris is still being Paris. Nicole has gotten engaged. She has quit smoking. She's not drinking. She reduced her body piercings from six to one on her ear. The source added, I knew months ago that Paris and Nicole weren't getting along, but they actually really hate each other. And even though Paris has made the show very personal, trying to get rid of Nicole, Nicole sees the show as a business separate from personal, but Paris Paris doesn't separate the two. An executive editor at Us Weekly said it's all very high school. She says there may be jealousy on Paris's part. Mm, so Paris is now jealous because Nicole is becoming a fashion icon of her own and less of a sidekick. Quote, maybe this is Paris's way of making sure she stays in the limelight that she thinks she deserves. She needs another sidekick, not an equal. So they're trying to suggest that Paris wanted to be the main character and she needed like, you know, a little... A little side, a little character to add on to her caricature. But um, I feel like Kim Kardashian kind of, <laughs> Kim Stewart failed, so then Kim Kardashian took the place. In the final episode, Paris sent Nicole a we have to talk text in which Nicole answered, so talk, but the show was left on a cliffhanger. So definitely the show played upon their feud, even though their feud was very real. So that's an interesting aspect of this reality TV experience because a lot of times it's over-exaggerated, but they like over-exaggerated something that was already really bad. Now we do best friends our whole lives since we're two years old. Yeah. Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie were best friends forever. <laughs> but now, 
the relationship is over. A rift between fast friends. The Paris and Nicole fight. The famous feud between Paris and Nicole. They hate each other's guts. And yet, the show must go on. So they're obviously dramatizing it, and I'm kind of here for it, but I also feel like there's a lot of implications. I mean, making this so public and so, I guess, you know, decided that they are, you know, they have this feud, they aren't friends. It kind of is closing the door to any, like, closure, any, like, willingness to reconcile in any way, because now their personal life and their business life is, like, you know, fueling this feud, and it's kind of now becoming part of the storyline. So they have to act into it. A lifelong friendship died, and Paris and Nicole hated each other's guts. We wanted to kill Nicole. They refused to even be in the same room together until a twist of fate. Nicole, we need to talk. So talk. So Paris and Nicole are accusing each other of being jealous of their prospective lives. Paris said, I've been best friends with her since I was two, but when I brought her onto my show, she got very jealous and turned on me for no reason. She cannot stand being around me because I get all the attention and people really don't care about her. Paris says that Nicole let fame go to her head. It breaks my heart. She was my sister. She was the funniest person to be around. She's not the same person anymore. I never want to speak to her again Ever. Paris also went on to say that Nicole's physical appearance isn't too great, calling her weight loss not normal and she quote looks horrible so season four was an absolute mess trying to film these two separately but e had an idea and they wanted to send paris and nicole to camp literally bunking with each other and this was a moment of growth for them they were able to spend time with each other and probably get to talk about some things they should have talked about a long time ago in october 2006 things took a turn for the better because paris and nicole were spotted in public not ignoring each other. According to People, the former BFFs were dining at West Hollywood's Dantana, which I love Dantana's. I am actually going to call in like 20 minutes because I'm making a reservation for my family when they come here. Such a good Italian restaurant. They reportedly chowed down on Caesar salads and penne pasta. A witness at the restaurant said they looked like best friends and left hand in hand smiling. Though Paris's publicist was hesitant to call it a reconciliation. He confirmed that they did in fact have a meal, but he claimed that he didn't know if it was business or personal. Supposedly their network had an idea of putting them on a stranded island together and both of them hated this idea and actually they reached out to each other to explain how badly they hated this idea which helped them become friends again. So they had like this work situation. It's like it's kind of like if you get like a you know a task from your boss and you're like oh my gosh I hate this like uh, you know I don't really like you know, Kevin over there, but I'm going to go talk to Kevin about how much I hate this. And they both bonded over the idea of hating the fact that they would be sent to a deserted island. After this moment, we see more of Paris and Nicole, and it seems like they are getting better. Nicole said, I can't get mad at her for talking crap about me. We were in a fight. As for what Nicole actually did, she says she has no idea. Paris told the media that it had little to do with her best friend's behavior and a whole lot to do with gossip. Quote, there was no reason why we were fighting. It was just silly. We believed what other people were saying. People are two-faced in this town, and they were trying to play us against each other. Which, honestly, I think is kind of a cop-out. I still, like, you know, the story I told you, like, what, six minutes ago at this point in the video? Like, I do think Nicole did something with that tape that really escalated things. But now they're just going to write it off as, like, you know, gossip, because they probably don't want to rehash that dark moment. There are high parts and there are low parts, and, and the, the mark of a true friendship is that you can overcome the low parts. Yes. yes. Well, it was actually our first fight, and I've been friends with her since I was two years old. Well, there old. you go. That's what I'm so, talking about. So, um, you know, it was just, we just kind of grew apart, mm -hmm. and, um, and then, you know, we kind of found our way back into mm -hmm. each other's lives. And, it was really sweet. And, and you, you weren't speaking for quite a long time, is that right? For about... A few years, yeah. A few, two years, two wow. Years, yeah. And, and uh, who, who made the first uh, gesture toward uh, patching it up? Um, well, she called me. It was my birthday. Oh, that's In September. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, she called me to wish yeah. me a happy birthday. And, and then while, while you guys were doing the show, you got to spend some time together, I would guess? Yeah. I mean, we had a lot to catch up on, and just, I mean, we didn't see anyone else except for mm -hmm. each other, so it really so gave us time yeah, to yeah. catch up. Yeah. yeah. Now, I have a theory when it comes to this birthday call that Nicole got, but I'll get there. Paris and Nicole's ongoing feud may have been one of the most iconic in celebrity history, but by 2007, they were okay. Now, there are different reports that Paris extended the olive branch with an email. Nicole is saying that Paris called her. 
Other reports are claiming that they got a call from the network about this island, and then I can think Paris reached out to complain about that idea. They did have an interaction where Paris did call her on her birthday, and I believe this was obviously all like, you know, done up and produced by the network. Despite their on-air reunion, the two were simply no longer the package deal they once were. Their career went in different directions. Paris pursued film and music while Nicole started getting into fashion. Let's go through one of those moments where they spoke on camera and they weren't really able to see eye to eye. You go first. I'll listen, you go first. No, you can talk first, I'll listen. This is lame, if you have something to say, then just say it. You know what, forget it, I have nothing to say to you. I have been listening to you girls arguing. I think what you should do is bury the hatchet and kiss and make up. Never. No way. Goodbye and good riddance. The way she said never, it is so dramatic. And I don't know who that woman is, but just a random third character there. Though I feel like if they do have this real beef, which I personally agree that it is real, um, there's a much deeper and darker conversation they want to have. And I think Paris is smart enough to know that she doesn't want to talk about how that tape affected her sitting there with Nicole and really getting into it because the world's going to see it. But eventually Paris called her to make up and to, I guess, wish her a happy birthday. Paris. Hello? 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 Happy birthday, it's Paris. Hi. Hi. Is it really you? Yeah, it's me. I just wanted to call you. I know it's been a long time, but I just, I miss you and I wanted to wish you a happy birthday. So now it seems like they are at peace, but they go on to live their own lives and it doesn't seem like either are a big part of, you know, there are worlds. So Nicole got married and Paris wasn't there. No, she wasn't a bridesmaid and she did not even attend. She claims it was because of work, but really, I mean, if Nicole is this best friend that you spent years talking about, doing a show with, talking about how you've been so close since you were two years old, you would think that she would show up to her wedding. Actually, Paris tweeted off to Vegas for her BFF's birthday the same day that she would have been at Nicole's wedding. So really, Nicole's wedding was not a priority. So it's kind of rude that Paris did not go to the wedding, assuming that she was invited. Maybe because she wasn't a bridesmaid, she did not want to go, but she did send Nicole a wedding gift, of course. All right, so Nicole Richie, she, her wedding came and it went and we were all following it and you weren't there. Were you invited? I was out of town, I was busy working. But were you invited? Yeah, of course. I've known her my whole life. Oh, okay. The media made up that story, too. Uh-huh. They always make up stories all the time. I don't even read anything anymore. Yeah. Well, it's best not to look at the, the magazines, especially when yeah. you're part of it. So things are awkward. I mean, you can even tell how awkward it is for Paris to talk about Nicole in that interview. But fast forward to 2014 to watch what happens live with Andy Cohen. When Nicole said that Paris is somebody that has been in my life since day one, I haven't spoken to her in a while, technically, but if you really want to get into it, my view of a friendship is somebody that you don't necessarily have to talk to every day, which I think is like what we all kind of agree with. You know, those friends you don't talk to for like a year and then you see them and it's you're just right back into it. In 2016, Paris had a few comments about the simple life and bringing it back she said i've actually been getting a lot of calls about that i'm thinking about it i've been offered some other reality shows as well but she turned it down i think we have seen that paris did eventually accept a reality show that i think it's called this is paris or paris's life on peacock which actually i just got peacock recently so i should go ahead and watch that have you guys watched it comment below i know like i feel like the only thing i ever see from there is that she keeps having secret babies and hiding it from her mom and every clip I see is her mom, like, realizing that there's a new grandchild that she had no idea was coming. In 2016, maybe she was thinking about a reboot, but she revealed in 2018 that she and Nicole are way too busy to film a series. And honestly, now that Paris is a mother, I can't imagine her going away for weeks at a time to go and film a show. In 2019, Paris updated fans on their friendship, revealing that they do still talk 
quote, I love Nicole. We were texting three days ago because it's our high school reunion. So she was reminding me of the date. Nicole did in fact show up to Paris's wedding in November 2022. So there are some photos of them laughing together. And it actually seems really nice to see them like grown up and happy. And even though they aren't like this best friend duo, at least they're civil. Like this should be a learning lesson to everyone. You can, you know, you can grow up and move past things. Our wedding photo. I'm so happy to have Nicole here with me on my big day. We've been friends since we're two years old. I love her so much and it just means so much to me that she's here. <laughs> so honestly, this is a pretty sweet ending to this story. I mean, it was a tough back and forth, but uh, the girl is made up and I think that we can all, you know, look at this friendship and apply it to our own lives in a way. Obviously not as extreme, I don't know though, I have one person in my life, one friend I had from like fifth grade till December 2021 and I will never be friends with them again. I don't know though, never say never, but really never ever. I mean, I'm like on the Paris end, like it would need to be a big apology from his side, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye guys.